I think the, the role of the Mayor has a couple of different facets, but certainly it's being head of a team. Uh, the team at Lismore Council is now uh, the Mayor plus 10 councillors, and the Mayor's role is to, uh, of course, chair the meetings, but also to convey to the community, to be the uh, spokesperson for council into the broader community and through the media. Uh, there are also roles of, say, um, performing community um, uh, opening events and uh, things like the citizenship ceremonies. So there's a ceremonial role as well. I think the qualities for all those include a quality to be able to communicate, uh, to be able to listen because communicate isn't, isn't just about getting a message out, it's about listening to the messages from the community to try and make sure our, commu our council stays on track with what the community expects and wants as, w as much as possibly we can balance the conflicting uh, wants and needs of our community. So it's a range of things and hopefully I'll perform the role um, with some ability and uh, to really honour the trust that the community has bestowed on me. In your opinion, what are the key issues that are currently affecting the Lismore Shire? I think there are varying things. First of all, um, managing development, managing the competing needs of development, uh, managing the competing needs of sections of our community. Things like climate change is also um, obviously an issue for all local governments. And overriding all of those at the moment and in, of immediate concern is the um, financial viability of local government. We are really the poor cousins compared to state and federal government. We do not get any share of the tax burden. We're not even mentioned in the Australian Constitution. So we are at the whim of the states. Our ratepayers are increasingly being asked to uh, bear the burden of uh, a higher level of uh, community infrastructure that not only the community wants but the community needs. So constantly local government is being expected to uh, balance all those com com um, competing needs with a diminishing dollar. So that kind of uh, balancing act is very difficult. How do you think the makeup of this newly formed council differs from that of previous councils? We've only just had the um, Electoral Commission uh, issue the list of successful candidates um, and uh, those who have become uh, uh, councillors in Lismore. It's looking like a good council. I'm very hopeful it'll be a council that works well together. I'm sure we've got a range of 10 other councillors other than me who work very hard. I think they're diligent, they're eager to uh, to step up and uh, really make the decisions that are in the be best interest of Lismore. I'm really pleased about the diversity of council, but I am somewhat disappointed that we only have one other woman. Vanessa Eakins, the Greens councillor, has been re-elected, um, and hopefully next time we'll have, have more women standing. But at the moment we're severely outnumbered, two women uh, to nine men. But I, I'm sure and I'm very confident it will be a good and workable council. Driving around the Lismore Shire, it's um, not uncommon, uh, uncommon for a person to see a lot of new developments coming up and um, a lot of infrastructure going in. When, when placed against the um, concerns about climate change and everything, um, how would you describe Lismore City Council? Would you describe it as being pro-development or pro-environment? I'm not sure if you can make that Polaroid judge polarised judgement. I think we are certainly pro-development. Uh, I would like to see us being uh, pro-sustainable development. So development such as housing development or industrial development or commercial development close to where people live and housing close to where people work so that we take away the need for people to be travelling huge distances um, with oil becoming scarce. Uh, also the costs of providing the road infrastructure are increased. So there's, there's a need for sustainable development. Um, I think urban development that has increased density and looking very carefully at the way we reduce um, farmland uh, because that's a risk if we're taking away valuable farmland for food production that we will need uh, close by where people live. I think we need to balance environmental concerns and development and I think we can have both as long as that development is sustainable and we're looking at the long-term future of our community both economically, um, 
environmentally and socially too to make sure that we have a mixed and sustainable um, uh, community where no one is really missing out. What role can Lismore City Council play in encouraging new developments to utilise renewable energy sources? Lismore has a very good um, Cities for Climate Protection plan and in that is the local action plan. It's been developed with a lot of community input. There are lots of things in there that are encouraging not just council to go down um, sustainable, clean, green energy use and um, actually uh, maximising our use of reducing resources but also to encourage business and the community to do the same. Whether it's simple things like demand management and water tanks or whether it's larger things such as replacing street lights with energy efficient light globes and, and looking carefully at our uh, development to make sure it's as sustainable as possible. I think there's a lot that council can do to lead the way and bring the community with us. Do you know of any alternative energy incentives for consumers that may be planned by Labor government at a national, state or local level? At the moment there are certainly incentives for things like water tanks and those water tank incentives come from local uh, such as through Rouse Water and Lismore City Council and through the state so it's becoming very cost effective for retrofitting. Uh, the basics requirements which is the new building code uh, set up down by the state government is requiring all new houses to have 40% saving of energy and water use um, in all new developments. So, and the most cost effective way of developing that is through putting in water tanks. So increasingly state government is becoming involved in making sure that we are conserving our resources and using resources wisely. And the federal government is also interested in those kinds of things too. I think this is a whole of government and all levels of government need to work together to make it easier for people to say install uh, solar hot water services and water tanks and other things that um, sustain us for the longer term but it's a matter of working together.